Eric Waite, and I'm a certified sommelier with the Court of Master Sommeliers and a French wine scholar. In this video, I'll be reviewing the Peated Malt Old Ballantruin Speyside Glenlivet Single Malt Scotch Whiskey. I'm recording this video from Levensworth, Kansas. I'm in town to go through a whiskey ambassador course in Weston, Missouri, which is just on the other side of the river, not too far from here. So early this morning, I flew into Kansas City, Missouri, and I'm just staying on the other side of the border at a hotel in uh, Kansas. Alrighty, so this is a peated malt uh, Highland Scotch whiskey. Um, it's unfiltered and it's at 50% alcohol by volume. Now, in the wine world, we talk a lot about uh, terroir. Terroir is a French word, and its root meaning just means dirt, but the word terroir um, refers to everything climatically that has an impact and is reflected in a wine. So it includes the, the, uh, the dirt, you know, the soil types, um, the uh, hillside and the angle of the sun, the climate, the temperature, uh, water nearby, all those things which have an impact on are reflected in wines. French are very much into um, a, how a wine reflects its place more than what particular grapes go into it. So whereas in the New World, particularly in the United States, we name wines after grape varietals, they name wines after regions, and so that wine is supposed to be a reflection of that region. Well, we don't hear the word terroir, which in its root meaning just means dirt. Um, it's the same word we use for the dogs that uh, dig in the dirt to go after um, squirrels or whatever animals we're training for, um, terriers, like a, like a rat terrier or a Jack Russell terrier, S same word. Um, the word has no exact meaning uh, in English. There's no exact word in English that you can convey for terroir, so we just use the word uh, terroir. Now, you don't hear the word terroir used for whiskeys very often, and yet <clears throat> whiskeys and other spirits do have a reflection of the place in which they're in. Now, because spirits uh, are more hands-on, more manipulated by uh, human makers, um, the emphasis isn't on uh, as strong uh, on the place. Um, you, you're not talking about so much about the terroir that the uh, grain is, is grown in, but they do talk about the water source. And in the case of uh, this whiskey, you talk about um, the peat. So in this video, I'll be reviewing the uh, peated malt Old Ballantruin Speyside uh, Glen Levitt single malt scotch whiskey, which is a um, Northern Highland or Speyside, which is part of Northern Highland uh, peated whiskey, which is different than Islay peated whiskey. And you can say, well, what's the difference? Isn't peat peat? Well, peated whiskeys have a major influence by the heat source that is used during the malting process. Originally, Coal was used on the mainland part of Scotland, whereas uh, peat was used as a heat source on the islands, particularly Islay and Campbellton, because they didn't have the availability of other uh, heat sources, particularly coal. And so people um, developed a taste and a preference for this smoky peaty characteristic. But the peat in Islay has this heavy oceanic influence. So you tend to get these briny notes, sea salt notes, um, like olives and seaweed notes in the descriptor uh, for those uh, peated whiskeys. But the peat for the mainland, unless they're shipping in peat from, from the islands, but the peat from the mainland isn't made up of uh, the same materials. So while you get the smokiness of uh, a peated uh, malted whiskey, you don't get the same oceanic influences. So let's get into this. Real light in color, um, sort of light golden amber. 
The lighting in this hotel room that I'm in isn't the greatest. You could probably see it though, high viscosity, real nice and clear on the nose. Good combination um, and, and balance of smoke and fruity characteristics. Mm. Probably needs to open up a little bit more. So today, as soon as I flew in um, th this morning into uh, Kansas uh, City, Missouri, I went to town, uh, Weston, where I'll be taking the uh, course and the exam tomorrow. Really, really cool place. Uh, very sort of old town, out in the country sort of uh, look to it. I'm buying a couple whiskeys from local producers here, and sometime in the future I'll be sharing them. Might be another month or so uh, till I get around to them, and I'll share some of the photography uh, that I'll be taking and talk more about the course. Uh, I might wait until I get the results from back from the exam, and then I'll, I'll do that review. So I do get fruit, stone fruits, tree fruits, so it's peach, pear, but coming in at the same time and intermixed with it with is a smoke. I get these dark chocolatey nutty notes. This whiskey smells like if you've ever um, gone camping and hanging around the, uh, the campfire. And if you're hanging around close enough, the campfire, you know, roasting marshmallows. Uh, when you leave and you smell your shirt, your clothes or something like that, your jacket, your sweater, whatever you're wearing, how your now your clothes smells like has that smokiness to it. That's what this is like. It has some citrus notes. Um, I want to say like grape, grapefruit pith, lemon, but definitely more on grapefruit than on the lemon. I get pepper, white pepper, a little black olive, a little bit of hints. I mean, it's kind of because the smoke is so interwoven with all the fruit notes, it's hard to distinguish the fruit notes from the, the smoke. So it's more like grilled apples, grilled pears. There's also a sort of a meatiness to it. Uh, reminds me of some Northern Rhone Reds. Um, Syrah is a grape that tends to have, uh, or it can have if, if done right, have this sort of um, dried meat characteristic or smoky meat, teriyaki meat, beef jerky sort of notes. And I have elements of that in this. All right, on the palate. Wow. Powerful whiskey. But again, right off the bat, <clears throat> it has both the smoke and the and, and the fruit. There are no briny notes. There are no uh, sea salt notes and those sea breeze notes. There isn't that sense of uh, like iodine and those characteristics that you tend to get from uh, Islay uh, peated whiskeys. Has a little bit of a bite but it's not offensive. I'm not reeling from it. It's not making me cringe. Um, it smooths out in the middle and towards, and towards the end, but it is, I would say, a muscular whiskey with a lot of structure to it. Um, the, the acidity, I would say, is, is medium. Um, it is medium in, in body. It has extremely long finish. and quite tasty as is. I really, really, really like this. I've mentioned this before in previous reviews that my preference, uh, the ideal whiskey for me, is that fruit balanced with uh, smoke that I don't have to add water to it uh, in order to get the bite to sort of to calm down. I like a smooth middle and a, and a smooth finish. And this has all that going on. I really, really like this. Um, But I think also have to take into consideration, just like as there's different styles of wines. You have 
dry wines, you have sweet wines, you have fortified wines, you have sparkling wines, you have um, sort of um, ice wines, all these different styles of wine, and you sort of have to deal with them according to the style of wine that they are. Same thing goes for whiskeys. You can have whiskeys that are fruity and sweet and can be like dessert-like. I think you have to deal with, deal with those and compare those with other whiskeys in that category. You can have wines that are um, really, 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 really smoky and peaty. And I think you have to deal with those in that, those contexts. And then those that have the fruit and the smoke going on and deal with them in that, in that context. This is the type of whiskey that I describe as you're in uh, your study sitting in a leather chair or a lounge chair uh, with the, you know, uh, maybe a comfortable jacket or your smoking jacket and you're, you're smoking your pipe or your cigars, um, reading a book, maybe got a fire going on, um, and uh, maybe even have some chocolate. This would go, I think, would really go really, really, really well with chocolate. So this is hits all the buttons of a whiskey that I like, the style of whiskey that I like. Sometimes I'm in the mood for a sweeter wine, if the, if the case calls for it. Sometimes I'm in the mood for a sweeter whiskey, if the mood calls for it. But general, generally, overall, uh, overall, this is the style of whiskey that I like. Um, I think it, so it's not just my personal preference for this, this whiskey, but I think it's in balance. The structure's good. The, the finish is, is, is good. Um, it has all the components there. Nothing is overriding uh the the other i'm gonna give this 95 points i think it's absolutely uh spectacular um i think for peated whiskeys i think what i'm discovering and finding out is and what i'm figuring out is i prefer peated whiskeys from the mainland from the highland rather than from uh islay if i think back to all the peat and smoky whiskeys that i have tried that i have liked they've all been from the highlands Alrighty. That's about it for this review. I'm going to be super busy tomorrow. Obviously, tasting a bunch of uh, whiskeys tomorrow in, in the class. Don't know if I'll have time to do a, another review, but uh, perhaps I will. And I'll share some pictures of um, the place where I'm taking I'm taking the class from and so forth. So, already, if you have subscribed to this channel, I want to thank you very much. If you haven't yet subscribed, but you like watching my reviews, Please subscribe, and if you like this view, give it a thumbs up. And until next time, cheers. So, if you're not in the habit of watching all the way to the end and what to the end of the credits, you should because I put little things, oftentimes at the end of my videos. Um, usually humorous, maybe a little comments or something like that, but I put funny things at the end of my videos. So if you watch them all to the end, you'll pick up on them. If you don't, then you're missing out on something. So I was tasting this whiskey and I was thinking, man, I wonder what this is like with chocolate. So I went downstairs, got me a Hershey's chocolate bar with almonds, picked up a couple of them, came back upstairs, Tried it with a little bit of the whiskey, and it's fantastic. Mmm. Wow. That is insanely awesome. And Hershey's isn't necessarily the most high-end chocolate, but this is absolutely fantastic. Um, and particularly with the almonds, they had the one the Hershey's bars without the almonds. But the character of that whiskey has a sort of nuttiness with the chocolate, chocolatey characteristic that sort of comes on on the tail end of the whiskey. So um, if you haven't tried it already, get and if you can get a higher end chocolate, go for it. But a chocolate bar, a milk or dark chocolate with um, almonds in it, um, and this whiskey is absolutely fantastic. Cheerio.